Yo guys, Theo here on Common Sense. I just finished a bulk. It's now late March and I've been bulking since the start of this year, meaning I've been eating in a caloric surplus, doing intermittent fasting only, 16-8, and taking a break from the longer fasts in order to put on muscle. And now that this phase is over, it's soon time to start cutting and doing more prolonged fasting again. So Prolonged fasting is obviously something I get a lot of questions about, which I appreciate. Uh, it helps with content ideas, helps me help you guys, so keep it coming. But some of these questions are big or wide enough for me to answer them in standalone videos. But there's also a lot of reoccurring questions that um, can really be answered quite quickly and don't deserve their own video in that sense. Like, for instance, about the salt water that I drink on the fast. It's like, which salt? How much of each? How much do you drink on the fast? It will be answered in this video because I've been thinking that why not make a video where I go through my full philosophy and approach to the prolonged fasting. Just everything I think about and do in regards to prolonged fasting. So this is the video. So first of all, I have this unusual uncommon sense fitness uh, approach to um, bodybuilding, meaning recreational, steroid-free, uh, drug-free bodybuilding, like training for strength and physique, aesthetics. Combining that with prolonged fasting is, yeah, it's my uncommon sense fitness thing. So the way I do this is roughly, I take periods like this, like around three months, where I skip the prolonged fasting completely, eat in a surplus and train hard to put on muscle, but also fat, because... Um, you know, I obviously <laughs> use prolonged fasting as a weight loss tool, but it's also that I put on weight in order to be able to fast. Like, uh, I call body fat food in the fridge because that's what body fat is. It is stored energy for when you don't get anything from the outside. So, uh, in order to be able to fast, because I enjoy fasting for many other reasons, the health benefits, the spiritual effect, the mental health effect that I've experienced many times, I enjoy getting that from fasting. So to be able to fast more, I actually eat in a bigger surplus than I think I would need to in order to put on muscle, to put on a bit more fat, to have this buffer to even be able to fast. So I do this bulking period, and then when I do them, and uh, more prolonged fasting, like something like a weekly 48 to 72 hour fast. Um, I am, um, yeah, I, I train, well, I, I'm not gonna say that the training takes a back seat, but I train less for like building muscle and more like skill oriented and mobility training, the kind of training that you don't necessarily need to put on weight to make progress with. So that's roughly how my uncommon sense fitness approach, what it looks like. And so, I have a list here about just everything I think about in regards to the fasting. So I'm just gonna go through point by point. So with the training, uh, p people have asked me how I train like leading up to the fast. And I've done, tried different things. I used to, because I noticed that going into the fast, like being really sore or something, that's not nice. Like you're obviously under recovered. Like think of it like this, in the gym, the training is of course necessary in order to build muscle and make progress, but in it's, it has to be followed by proper recovery, meaning mostly sleep and nutrition. It takes a few days to fully recover from intense weight training workout. So uh, it makes sense, right, that if you train really hard and start fasting right away, uh, it might you might not be able to recover fully and yeah, you just m might n just not feel great from that. So for a while, I used to deload uh, into the longer fast. I mean, a deload is just training at a lower intensity to be able to recover while not taking a complete break from training. So in my case, what I did was I just lowered the volume. Like I did on all my regular workouts, I just did one working set instead of the typical like three. Um, yeah. Uh, so, so I did that for like three days before a fast. Now I've noticed that I don't really need to deload that much like if I did it like right like for my bulk now if I for some reason wanted to start fasting as soon as possible after that I would not have just done my last intense workout and had a last meal and started fasting I would have taken something like three workouts where I train at a lower intensity to recover better but now uh, I, I've been I am taking a couple of weeks here to just kind of experiment in the gym, see where my strength is at, go for some uh, for some personal best, training a little bit less and less um, intense. So I just don't have the same need to deload. But something I think about, like when possible, uh, I I want to, if I have a workout, I don't want to start the fast on that day. I would uh, like to eat on the next day and start the fast then. And it's again because this it takes a little time to recover from 
uh, an actual intense workout. So, you know, just training hard and starting the fast is like, it's not a huge deal if that's what works with your life. Like, uh, yeah, but it might, you might just feel a bit better if you can give yourself at least another day of eating to recover properly before starting the fast. So that's basically everything I think about before e e eating before, uh, or training, I mean, <laughs> before the fast. During the fast, this I have a standalone video on. Uh, it's called Why You Should Be Training a Fast, the kind of a tricky title that I talk about kind, what kind of training makes sense to do during the fast. And so some people, they think they can just train like normal during the fast. And it's, the question is just like, why? Because again, we need building blocks. If you are going to go and break down muscle in the gym, you need building blo blocks to repair that. And so when you're fasting, you're not getting any building blocks. Like we store fat, yes, for energy, but we don't store protein. So we have no way of uh, rebuilding the muscle in that way. So it's not doing like training just like I would do normally. It's not something I do if I do train. It's uh, for the purpose of, in my experience, you don't really lose muscle fasting. I've never been able to tell, but if, if there's uh, the body response to different signals, you give it. So just going and training, like l doing the minimum you can to just stimulate the muscle. So you're sending a signal to the body that, oh, apparently even when fasting, we need this muscle. So if possible, body take protein from other tissue, like, like skin that we all have an, an excess of. So doing something like a full body workout with just one working set of each, that's something I might do. I could also do mobility training because again, it's not really something, if you don't break down muscle in the same way, uh, at least selecting the right exercises. So you could even make some mobility progress there, but that's basically, you know, low, very low volume strength training or mobility training. That's what I do on the fast. So we come to the eating. Uh, before the fast, uh, I mean, I used to sometimes eat keto, low carb, leading up to the fast, uh, just to enter ketosis during the fast faster. But I've noticed that I, at this point I've adapted. I don't really, yeah, it's not really a problem for me just going from eating carbs uh, and starting fasting. So I don't do much adjustments there. Um, what I started doing, I used to, when I really was like kind of rigid with the hours I fast, if it was a 72 hour fast, it was 72 hours, you know, um, because I didn't want to go the whole like last day. If I had started fasting in the evening, I would have to on the last day, you know, go the whole day without eating and then eat in the evening to avoid that. I always ate uh, a lot in the morning so I could break the fast in the morning. Now where I, I think it can be good when you want to learn the skill of fasting to kind of be, be a little bit rigid with the hours like that. But then when you have control over it, like why? Like, does it really matter if it's a 65 hour fast or 80 hour fast or whatever? So now most of the time I will just add, uh, like, like what would be my intermittent fasting window with 16 hours. I will just add that on top. Like I'll eat like just like I do on a normal day. Um, and I'll break it just uh, eating kind of like w how I do it on a, normal day so uh, instead of going like you know from the same point of the day it's going to be i have my dinner on one day and then a few days later i have breakfast you know um so yeah after the fast uh like it's really <laughs> i i have a good diet you know i i address all my needs but i i guess i kind of just want to um more about what I eat or uh, whatever, uh, my view of uh, breaking the fast. Like the way I see it, when you do a fast, you do a sort of detox, uh, but you also deplete yourself of, like, like hopefully you clean out uh, some crap in your body and, uh, you know, the autophagy, you, you're, the cells are eating themselves, as, as, like old damaged cells get eaten by healthy cells. And yeah, you do some detox in that sense, but you also deplete yourself of, a lot of essential stuff, like you deplete yourself of glycogen in the muscle. You have not, no protein and protein is essential for a bunch of processes in the body. Uh, you, you're depleting yourself on some micronutrients. So I'm always like, okay, I've cleaned out the crap, but some of the good stuff went out with that. Now it's time to bring back all the good stuff. And that, that's the way I view the food uh, when, it, um, yeah, when breaking the fast. And I think that's why I've never broken it uh, with any sort of junk food. Uh, to me, it just... The, the thought disturbs me to um, 
it's it's basically like taking a dirty shirt and putting it in the washing machine, cleaning it, having it in the whatever the dryer, and then you take it out and have a big shit on it. That, that's the way I view um, eating junk food uh, when breaking the fast. You know, so I, it's more more about what. Uh, it's like how do I think about it? Like yeah, where all the good stuff that also went away with the fast. That's what we're uh, giving back to the body now. Okay, and so what I consume on the fast, so we have the salt water question first, like, yeah, the, it's from the snake diet, you know, uh, Cole Robinson, the snake juice, that basically all it is, is that, you know, hydration, it's not only about water, it's also about electrolytes, uh, which are salts, and the two main ones for hydration that you need uh, is sodium and potassium. And so it's just a way of feeling better on the fast. It's not that it's going to be dangerous. Like you'll be able, uh, if you did a plain water fast, you can replenish on electrolytes, you know, via food after the fast. It's just that if you drink plain water only on the fast, you're, you're going to force your body to excrete some electrolytes and you might get some issues with like headaches, lightheadedness during the fast and all. So the, the whole point of it, it's nothing ma more magical than it, it supports hydration better and you'll just feel better on the fast. Um, like the, I don't even mix it these days. I just pour, uh, like when I did use to mix it, I took some sodium chloride. That's basically any table salt, but you'd preferably want some unprocessed like sea salt. So, because um, like, it's still sodium chloride in whatever processed salt you bought from the grocery store, but that's like all there is. There's no trace minerals anymore. So some unprocessed uh, sea salt would be good. And then potassium chloride powder, which can be a little tricky to get a hold of in some places, but you can always order it online. Just Google potassium chloride, chloride powder. Uh, and I've used one teaspoon of each for two liters of water. But these days, I don't even mix it. I just pour a little of both on my tongue and chug down a glass of water. And I do that a few times throughout the day. And I don't think about, this is the thing. People ask, well, how much do you drink of it? And it's like, do you always go around thinking about how much water, you know, all these, it's, it's a fitness um, myth or like cliche that, oh, you need so and so much water throughout the day. That's bullshit, you know, it's entirely dependent on how much, like the demand on you, if you if you've been out moving a lot and sweating a lot, you're gonna need a lot more water and electrolytes, right? And if you're just sitting at home, you might not need much at all. Like some people doing the dry fasting, you know, where you don't even drink water, when they're just sitting at home doing nothing, it's not even that they don't even experience the dehydration that much. So. It's like, if you want to mix it, you can go with that ratio of one teaspoon of each salt for two liters, but then just drink by feel. Just drink according to how you feel. It's no certain amount that you need to go for, all right? And yeah, it, I guess it's something I've learned from fasting too, how much hydration has to do with salts. Like nowadays, when I train or when I'm in the sauna and I get thirsty, if I go and drink just plain water then, uh, it feels like something is missing because again hydration is not only about the water right uh, and the 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 times where you where I don't feel that way about plain water is when I'm actually like eating if I just had a big salty meal then I just I'm not gonna feel like something is missing in the water right because I got the salt from the food but yeah the, I drink black coffee on the fast too and it's just I don't think it's a huge deal you know it's basically zero calories actually feeds into some of the effects from the fast like autophagy and basically all it is is like it's not even so much for the caffeine for me it's like um it's it's just you know a little something to me because that can be like the big and one of the biggest problems with fasting it can just be a little boring even if you're dealing well with the hunger and stuff it could just be a little boring not to get to experience any taste. So it's a little like treat or crutch or whatever you want to call it. Mm, I will sometimes have just sparkling water. I, I, the few times I mix the snake juice, I often use a soda stream or something for the bubbles, like the faster, the faster street I call it. I love sparkling water in general, but yeah. So excited, like, wow, not just plain water, there's bubbles in there. Wow, what a treat for someone who isn't eating. But yeah, th this is basically what I usually consume on the fast. But I put here two supplements. Sometimes, uh, I like, I've done most of my fasting without supplements. But I, again, w like how you can think of it is that 
If you're fasting for weight loss, autophagy, stuff like that, um, like zero calorie things are not going to interrupt that. Uh, like obviously <laughs> eating, I don't know, some magnesium or something, it's not going to hinder your weight loss. But if you're doing the fast to like heal your gut and you have digestive issues that you want to sort out, well, then you don't want to put any stress at all. You want to give a complete relief to the organs, right? So that's when it would make sense to stay away from like anything, even coffee, you know, if you, if you have gut issues. Um, but it's to be honest, when I've taken the supplements, because in the grand scheme of things, I eat so healthy and everything when I eat and I eat a lot of food, I'm most likely not going to be just from not eating on a few days, I'm most likely not, not going to get fully depleted. It's almost like a nerdy thing, you know, it's almost like I feel like yeah, I'm hacking the fast. Like, oh, they wouldn't have been able to do this back in the day, like eating zero calories, but still getting some magnesium, boron, creatine, like I almost uh, think of it that way, it, like... So, yeah, it's not, I can't tell you any experience that, oh, it made me feel better or like better or worse when I did either. So it's almost like a little mental satisfaction thing Yeah, I've done sometimes. I don't really care about it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's not a big deal with the supplements. Like if you have some calorie-free supplements that you want to take on a fast, why not? And I have sometimes used some nootropics, you know, like... Um, you know, this kind of thing that's supposed to enhance your focus a bit without caffeine. Like sometimes when I've had some work to do during the fast, I've used this. And it's again, it's like, I, I, I don't see it interfering with my purposes with the fast too much. So why not, you know? And the last thing I put here still is diet soda, because it is a common question. Oh, can I have diet soda on the fast? Like, I, I could make a, a standalone video, I guess, about this, like kind of a rant mode that... Why are you asking, you know, are, are you feeling like you're going to rely on drinking a bunch of diet soda to even get through the fast? Well, then, then I, you have to question, like, why am I, shouldn't I get rid of my addiction to having to have some kind of sweet taste all the time? Like, th then if you're someone that would be leaning towards drinking a lot of it, then I would say just don't drink it at all. But again, it's like it's not like it's gonna interfere with the weight loss really, but food addiction, uh, like get ridding yourself of food addiction, it's not, not, not gonna be good to have a big crutch like that, you know? So what I, my approach with it is like, I never rely on it. I don't, like mo most of the time when I've been fasting, I've not been drinking diet soda, but I think for instance, when I've been you know, been in some kind of social setting and people are eating or drinking, it's just to be able to take part in the whole thing. Like, yeah, diet soda is a nice little hack for that. So I would say, yeah, it can be okay, but don't overdo it. And if you feel like you would have the tendency to do to overdo it, don't do it at all. Okay, um, then we have, um, well, I put sauna here because I love the sauna in general, uh, do, do it quite frequently, but I love it on the fast. It's again, it feeds in to the effects the fast have uh, already have on you. Like both sauna and fasting will decrease inflammation, increase autophagy, and what was, uh, yeah, the growth hormone spike. Both of them will spike growth hormone. So it's just a nice combo. If you've been fasting for even 24 hours and you take a sauna, uh, like the way your joints feel then, like they're so lubricated, it's just so smooth. So it's just a very nice combo. And, uh, yeah, it's just two things that feed in really well to each other. So it's just something I enjoy doing on the fast and might even do a bit more when fasting, like instead of once per day, maybe I go in the morning and at night, you know, and I'm gonna come back to that by the way, but so sleep, sleep can be an issue on the fast sometimes because, because the body is gonna want when it notices that you're not getting any energy from the outside, um, some processes to uh, hold on to energy, like lowering your energy expenditure in ways that it can, like lowering NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, meaning you'll just start like doing things like having a restless foot, tapping your fingers or something. You're just going to start doing less of those things. But in one sense, it will turn up your energy, put you in a hunter state, increase your um, uh, senses, like your eyesight, your hearing, your smell. And uh, yeah, elevates your cortisol uh, to make you alert. And this can be an issue with sleep sometimes. So basically, it's all the same things that go for um, managing, like getting good sleep, uh, like normally. Go, but it's just that it's even more important. If you want to make sure you get good sleep on the fast, do things like get outside and go for a walk and get sunlight early in the day so the body picks up on 
what time of day it is, the circadian rhythms, you know. Uh, use blue light blocking glasses. I, I must say, by the way, I've been using these at night for a long time. I really feel like they improve the sleep. So just do these things. But what I was saying about the sauna, if you have access to a sauna close to your home or something, like I'm lucky enough to, yeah, have, do, uh, the, the sauna can help. It just taking quite an intense sauna session at night can kind of drain you a bit and help you sleep. I've actually used the sauna as a sleep aid on fast sometimes. And so the last part I put here is fat loss. What I think about doing to increase fat loss. Well, first of all, the coffee can actually be the caffeine just, um, uh, in, yeah, you know, it's it's meaning, meaning, you know, but it could uh, speed up uh, uh, yeah, it's going to elevate your heart rate a bit. You're, you are going to have just a slightly higher metabolism or energy expenditure from that. But um, the most, like, again, with the fasting, we have to realize that we're now in a state there a lot of good things happen in the body, but um, we don't want to break ourselves down, like doing heavy weight training or intense cardio, like sprinting or something, because... We, we just don't have the resources to fully recover from that. So, but what people need to understand in general, even not in regards to fasting, is that just movement uses energy and it uses more than you might think. So walking, just walking a lot of the fasts is something I take into consideration if I want to raise, raise the fat loss and just general activity that it doesn't necessarily have to be exercise. Like, yeah, you, you could go on an exercise bike or a cross train or whatever. Uh, yeah, but it's um, it doesn't have to be that structure, I mean. Like, go on a big walk, a big long walk in the forest with um, your friend or whatever. That's going to aid you in your fat loss in the fast a lot without breaking you down into a state that you can't really recover from there. So just walking and low intensity, steady state uh, cardio, uh, that's, that's the go-tos on the fast. So yeah, I think I went through it all. I'm sure I'm going to come up with something. <clears throat> I should have mentioned this, but th these are the basics. These are the things I always think about. Um, yeah, <laughs> everything I think about in regards to doing longer fasting. So Please comment, let me know, do you have any questions about anything I talked about here or anything else related to fasting or of course related to anything that I talk about, training, whatever. Please let me know, please like the video and please comment anyway. <laughs> All comments and likes help support the channel, helps more people see it, so it's very helpful, I appreciate it. Please subscribe for more content about fitness, fasting, losing weight, building muscle, self-improvement, all kinds of things. Alright guys, I'll see you later. Hope you liked the video. Peace.